On the board today, we have the simplest of light circuits. We have a very simple relay circuit with a positive trigger. And then we have a simple relay circuit with a negative trigger. Right here, we have power coming in through a fuse to a switch. And then when you flick the switch on, power comes out of the switch, goes to the bulb. And then the bulb on the other side has a ground, which then turns the light bulb on. And then, of course, if you turn off the switch, you cut off the power wire going to the bulb, and therefore your bulb turns off. Now, this is the simplest of circuits, so that switch can easily handle the amperage that this bulb is drawing. But what happens if you replace the bulb with a big giant motor that draws more electricity than the switch can handle. So let's say, for example, that this switch can handle 5 amps of electricity flowing through it, but this thing draws 10 amps. That means that your switch can't handle the amount of electricity flowing through it, and you'll burn out your switch. So in that case, you could get a bigger, badder switch, uh, a 10 amp or a 15 amp or even a 20 amp switch, some sort of larger amperage than your motor is actually drawing, and that would work totally fine as long as your wiring is the appropriate size as well. Because your wiring needs to be able to flow that amount of amperage to your switch and out of your switch to your motor. Now the next option is you use a relay. So let's talk about that. These relays are five pin Bosch style relays. And as I said, they have five pins on the bottom. Each one is numbered and the numbers go along with this note right here. So you'll see pin 86 on the left, pin 85 on the right, pin 87 on top, pin 30 on the bottom, and pin 87A in the middle. So you'll see each one of those numbers corresponds with these colors, and that way you know which number each color wire is. Now, as I said, this relay is controlled on the positive side of the relay, which means power comes into a fuse, up to a switch, and the switch sends power out to tell the relay to turn on and off. So the switch tells the relay to turn on, and then the relay turns the light bulb on, like so. Now the cool thing about relays is that they do all the hard work for the switch. So the switch only has to control the relay, turning the relay on and off, which is very easy to do for really low amperage switches. So you can have a little tiny switch controlling a very large circuit because the relay is doing all the heavy lifting. You have a tiny switch telling the relay to turn on and off. The relay can handle probably 40 amps, which means powering up a window motor that draws 10 or 15 amps is totally fine to do. The switch can't do it by itself, but the switch can tell the relay to turn on and the relay can handle turning the motor on. Now let's go back to the demonstration for just a second and talk about how this is actually wired. The power comes in this yellow fuse and goes up to the switch. And then the switch, when it's turned on, sends power through the white wire to pin 86. On the opposite side of the relay is pin 85, which is the black wire, which comes right down here to ground. Now those are the two wires that allow the relay to turn on and off. And now this other red wire right here with the blue fuse, that goes into the blue wire, which is pin 30 on the relay. Now that's the circuit that's actually going to power up whatever accessory you have, whether it's a light bulb or a window motor or whatever else it could be. Now the other side of that part of the relay is the yellow wire. So that's power coming out of the relay when it's turned on. And you can see that goes right to this light bulb. Then the other side of the light bulb has a black wire coming out, which goes to ground. So once again, you have power coming in through this blue fuse, through the blue wire. And then when the relay is turned on, power is sent out the yellow wire to the bulb and then to ground. As soon as you turn the circuit off, there's a disconnect between the blue and the yellow wire because the relay has turned off and opened up that circuit, and now the yellow wire does not have power going through it anymore. Now the other wire on this relay is the red wire, which comes out and goes to a second bulb. Now that is pin 87A, and if I plug it in, you're gonna see that it turns on the bulb. And that's because the power is actually coming in this blue wire, pin 30, and it's going out pin 87A when the relay is turned off. But as soon as we turn the relay on with the switch, this bulb will turn off and this one will turn on because the power goes away from 87A and 287 when we flip the switch on, which you can see right here. Now you can buy a relay that doesn't have pin 87A at all because a lot of people will actually buy a five pin relay because they're really plentiful and easy to find and they just won't even wire up pin 87A at all. But if you do want to use 87A, you might use it for maybe a fog light circuit. So when you turn on your high beams, it automatically turns off your fog lights. Now, as I said, this switch is controlled on the positive side of the circuit. We have a power wire coming in 
and the power wire goes to the switch, and then the power goes through the switch and to the relay and turns on and off the relay. Now the other way of doing this is with a negative trigger relay where the switch is actually controlled on the negative side of the circuit. Let's pull this out so it's a little less distracting. Now one common reason that you might use a negative trigger is with horns in a car. Most horns in a car only have one wire going up the center of the steering column to the horn button. And my guess is that it's really just a packaging issue because if you had a positive trigger, you'd have to have a positive wire going up to the horn button through the steering column and then a positive wire going back down the steering column to make the horn work and to send power to the relay. But with a negative trigger, the steering column itself is grounded and therefore you only have to run one wire up the steering column and then the other side of the switch can just ground right to the steering column itself and it's one less wire that you have to run through the steering column, which is a great deal because there's limited space in a steering column. Now another use for a ground triggered relay is if you had a whole bank of relays under the hood of your car or someplace away from your dashboard and then you had the switches in your dashboard of your car, that means you only have to run ground wires into your car from wherever your bank of relays is. So relays and all the power that goes with them could be under your hood and then you run ground wires into your car and that's a much safer scenario because if a ground wire grounds out, it's no big deal, it just turns the relay on. Where if a power wire was to ground out, then it might actually blow a fuse or, you know, cause some sort of electrical issue. Now here's how it's wired. We have power coming up with the blue fuse, and that's set up just like this blue fuse. It comes up here, goes to the blue wire. This one comes up here, goes to the blue wire. But it also connects to the white wire. So that means it connects to pin 30 and pin 86. So there's power going to both of those wires all the time. Now on the opposite side of the relay, we have pin 85, which is the black wire. And the black wire is what actually goes out and goes to the switch. So on this one, we sent that right to the ground. On this one, we send it to the switch. And then the other side of the switch is a ground. So that means we are turning on the relay by grounding pin 85 like this. Now we also have pin 87 coming out of the relay which is this yellow wire right here and going down to the bulb. And then of course on the other side of the bulb we have a ground wire. So here's how it works. We have power coming in through the blue wire and then when the relay is turned on, the power comes out the yellow wire to the bulb and then the bulb grounds and the light turns on. But for the relay to actually turn on, you need to have power coming in pin 86 and then ground on 85, which you do as soon as you flick this switch on. Then of course we still have pin 87A which is the red wire hooked up exactly the same as this circuit where power comes out of that all the time until the relay is turned on. So power is coming in right here, pin 30, and it's going out pin 87A because the switch is off. As soon as you turn that switch on, then the power comes out 87 and shuts off 87A. Hopefully you enjoyed this video today. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to know more about wiring, I'm going to have a playlist right up here in the corner where you can watch a whole bunch of other electrical circuit videos. And I'm sure if you liked this one, you'll definitely like those, maybe even more.